Have you ever struggled getting your mixes louder or often left wondering why commercial releases sound so much louder than your own? Well, outside of mastering, there's a few mixing tricks that go into achieving that professional loudness that your own mixes could be lacking. And in this video, I'll break down those tricks into four simple steps to achieve loud, punchy mixes every time. So let me show you how. But before we start, if you want to get your mixes to sound like pro songs, I highly recommend checking out Sage Audio's Mixing and Mastering Membership. As a member, I have to say the experience is incredible. Just for signing up, you'll receive 10 free mastered songs per month with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback, and access to their flagship Mixing and Mastering Education program called the Sage Audio Engineer. For more on that at the end of the video. As I mentioned, there are a few ways of building loudness into your mix, but there are also some common mistakes and issues that could be holding your mixes back that we need to touch on first. A common misconception is that you can just throw a limiter onto your mix bus and push it until you achieve your desired loudness level. The issue you'll run into here, especially if you haven't used any of my upcoming mixing tricks, is that you'll significantly reduce the punch of your mix by over limiting, along with adding in a ton of unpleasant distortion to your track. The reason why is because you need to mix with loudness in mind if that is your desired end goal once the mix and mastering process has been completed. You can't add in loudness as an afterthought if you haven't built it in throughout your mix. So always make sure you know the kind of sound you or your client want first before you even start to mix. With that said, let's jump into my mixing session and I'll walk you through my four tips for getting louder mixes every time. Tip one is all about controlling the low end of your mix. In case you didn't already know, low frequencies have the most energy, which means they'll quickly set off and overwork your mix bus chain if they go untreated. That's why it's crucial to be aware of this point and apply the right process into your tracks, depending on what instruments make up your given arrangement. For the low end, some common instruments that you will need to deal with in this frequency range will be kick drums and bass guitars, a lot of synths and effects like impacts and risers can also have a huge amount of low-end information, so make a note to check these tracks too if your mix contains a lot of post-production elements. So now you know what to look out for, how can you control these low frequencies in the mix? One way is to make good use of high-pass filters on an EQ. You don't need to remove the low-end on every single track in your mix, but it's a good idea to use high-pass filters strategically throughout the mixing process. For instance, take this tambourine sound I have. It actually has a ton of low end information that just isn't needed in the full mix. If you imagine similar tracks to that, scattered through a 100 plus track count, you can see how quickly build ups of low end frequencies can occur, and how that in turn will affect your mix bus processing. So the idea behind high pass filtering the majority of your tracks is to stop this build up from ever happening to begin with. It's a good idea to at least check most of your tracks first, as like with my tambourine example, even instruments that you imagine would mostly contain high frequency information can be quite deceptive. The other way to control low end is with compression. Often multiband compression is a great tool to use here, as you can target specific problem areas and only compress the offending frequencies. I've used this idea for the processing on the bass guitar in my mix. Using this plugin, I'm able to compress both the low end and the above frequencies of the bass individually, and then blend those two to taste. It provides your mix with a really solid, consistent low end, as you can hear in this example. Tip 2 is all about clipping, but similar to my point about using high pass filters on an EQ strategically, you can do a similar thing with clipping. You want to tame any loud transients in your mix, to make the compression and limiting stages on your mix bus processing much easier. Drums in particular will have a lot of transient information that is best to handle before the mix bus stage, so adding a clipper to your drum bus, like I've done here, can help to shave off the very peaks of those transients, which will in turn stop your master bus compression and limiting from overworking. You can even do this in series, as I like to do sometimes. The first clipper in my chain I use to get the drum sound, as I really like the sound certain clippers have when pushed too far. And then the second clipper in my chain is much more transparent, as it's only there to further shape the transients of the drums, and make it easier to push the mix harder once it comes to the limiting stage. Tip 3 is the use of saturation throughout your mix. This is something you want to spread out across multiple tracks which will collectively add a pleasing harmonic depth to your mix, with the added benefit of rounding out harsher, more transient heavy sounds too. Just take a listen to how my mix sounds with and without any saturation added first. Mm -hmm. 
Saturation is really a cumulative effect that is more noticeable once you spread it across multiple tracks within a mix. Though you may not want to add a saturation plugin on every channel of your mix, it's a good idea to use a subtle amount spread across a wide selection of tracks, which will give your mix a greater sense of harmonic colour and density. And lastly, tip 4 is about mid-range, and how most of the energy and punch in your mix will come from this frequency range. Just take a quick listen to my mix with the mid-range scooped out slightly, and you can instantly hear how much weaker it sounds in comparison to the original. It can be difficult to get the right balance of mid-range in a mix, as this area can become easily cluttered due to a lot of instruments like guitars, bass, vocals and more all having overlapping frequencies in the mid-range. So a common pitfall I see a lot of beginner mixing engineers make is to scoop out too much mid-range in all of their tracks. It's easily done, as reducing the mid-range can often have a deceptively pleasing sound to start with, but too much of this effect will leave you with a thin, lifeless mix. A way I like to avoid this problem is to first look at what tracks make up the mid-range in my mix, and then decide which ones really need to dominate this frequency area. It's also important to note that a lot of natural loudness comes from the mid-range frequencies, so if your mix is mostly made up of high and low-end information, you're going to find that your mixes always sound quieter and weaker than commercial releases, even if they're technically registering at the same loudness level. This is due to the effect of perceived loudness. I'm waking up and shutting down from looking at my bank account. I'm waking up and shutting down from looking at my bank account. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to get your mixer to sound like pro songs, I highly recommend checking out Sage Audio's Mixing and Mastering Membership. As a member, I have to say the experience is incredible. Just for signing up, you receive 10 free mastered songs per month with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback and access to their flagship Mixing and Mastering Education program called the Sage Audio Engineer, which includes start to finish session walkthroughs and 35 multi-track sessions for mixing practice, so you can learn how to create your own pro mixers and masters. Additionally, the membership offers you unlimited mixing feedback from Sage Audio Engineers and community members before having your mixers mastered. This is highly valuable giving you access to a thriving community of producers and engineers who can provide you with feedback about what could be improved first before your mix is professionally mastered. Also, being able to hear how a professional masters your mix first is a great way of improving your own skills, so getting 10 free mastered songs per month is really going to pay for itself. So if this sounds like something you'd benefit from, and I'm sure you would, use the link in the description to get a 70% discount on the membership, which brings the total cost down to just $15 per month.